Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Hmm. Gotta have my coffee. It's early in the morning. Um, it's kind of funny because Starbucks is already all about the holidays and we just got done with Halloween. <laughs> oh well, better get an early start on that one. Um, today I want to talk about something that I didn't talk about in my uh, fork compression video. And the reason I didn't bring it up was because I felt like it just adds too much complication for most people if they're just thinking about their fork compression they don't really understand like fully what's going on but i'm going to talk about it now because it is a very important part of how suspension works so i apologize for those that are more technically savvy that i just kind of skipped over it um and that is negative air pressure so in a fork and in a rear shock you have two chambers you have positive air and that's the main chamber that i talked about that deals with the compression and you have negative air um and speaking of pink bike in my last video i showed the hook to flat uh videos um they also have this graphic that i'm going to show you right here um this graphic actually explains positive and negative air pressure really well to a point that I probably don't need to go any further and do the animation that I'm going to show you in a minute, but I'm going to do it anyway because I like doing this kind of stuff. So you can see there's a negative air chamber and that's smaller and then there's a positive air chamber and that's much larger. And um, as you compress the positive air chamber gets more pressure and the negative air chamber gets lower pressure so there's a reason for negative air pressure and i'm going to talk about that so let's get into it um one of the problems if you were to if you look at my previous video if you only had positive air and you didn't have a negative air chamber um what would happen is you have to push against that you know 150 200 psi or whatever it is and that's quite a bit of psi so it would take a lot to get the fork to initially compress um so and i didn't talk about that bit because it just happens like forks are designed to have that negative air pressure in that off the top or initial compression is built into the fork so that's why I didn't talk about it but let's talk about it now um, because some forks allow you to adjust negative air most forks don't most forks it's built in and they have little areas where when you uh, compress the fork it'll actually allow the air to escape into the bottom chamber and balance it out um, but some forks, I have a Raven fork, MRP Raven fork, that I can actually pump in the negative air to where I want it. And DVO makes an off the top adjustment. Um, my assumption, just because of how this works, is I'm assuming that off the top just changes the size of that negative air chamber and that gives you that fine tune adjustment. So um, the negative air chamber allows your fork to actually have that initial softer feel at the top in that, that springy feel, right? Um, and then as you get deeper into your compression, the negative air chamber pretty much gets canceled out. So I'll explain you how that happens here in an animation. Okay, so here's the graphic I'm gonna work with and you can see the top part is your stanchion and that's kind of that goldish color. And then the bottom part is the lower. And this gray part that you see is actually this piece called a piston and it's oversimplified in this graphic um, but yes this is the piston that separates the negative air and the positive air so this is the positive air chamber and this is the negative air chamber 
And the idea when your fork is extended like this is to have them roughly equal. So we're gonna work with 200 PSI in this example. So I have 200 PSI in the top and 200 PSI in the bottom. So what ends up happening then is the positive air chamber and the negative air chamber cancel each other out and that makes it really easy to get the fork moving at that initial uh, start of the compression stroke. Now what happens as we compress this fork? You can see that now you have a lot more space in the negative air chamber and less space in the positive air chamber. So now look what happens to the pressures. The negative air chamber becomes less pressure and the positive air chamber becomes more pressure. And the reason is that is we're changing the size of the amount of space. So that's a lot of what I talked about in that previous video, just about the positive air chamber. Um, and now the negative air chamber has less influence on what the fork is doing because the pressure is significantly dropping and that allows the positive air chamber to take over and work on the compression as I talked about in the previous video. So this little tidbit that I just described is really important in understanding kind of how you can initially compress the fork. Um, and as I mentioned before, if we didn't have that negative air chamber and that kind of canceling out of the positive air chamber, it would be really hard to get the initial movement of the fork. So the negative air chamber is essential and pretty much every manufacturer um, has their suspension set up this way. They're all, they all have different little tweaks and takes on it and things to kind of improve the feel and all of that. But in a nutshell, this is how it works. Um, so let's go ahead and move into how, what happens when it fully compresses, because this is kind of what I talked about in the previous video and we'll touch on it here as the fork compresses even more. Okay, so now that the fork is at full compression, notice that the positive air chamber has a much higher PSI in it. So it's wanting to push back at the rider much harder. And the negative air chamber has little influence at all because it doesn't have much PSI in it. So that's what's kind of cool about this design is that as the fork goes further into its travel, the negative air chamber becomes less of an effect on the fork and then the positive air chamber takes over and that's where that compression bit comes into play that I talked about in the other video. I will link that other video up here in the corner so you can go watch that if you're interested in how that positive air chamber works. Um, but I did want to make this video to understand how the negative air chamber works. Now as we move back into the full extension of the fork, notice how we go back to the negative air chamber and the positive air chamber equaling out, right? So this is basically how the negative air chamber makes it easier at the top of the stroke. So let's talk about how you can adjust the negative air chamber on a couple of forks. So when the positive air chamber and the negative air chamber cancel each other out, that means it's gonna be really soft at the top um, of that travel. On some forks allow you to adjust that negative air chamber, my MRP Raven does, and I really like it because I can add the right amount of air pressure in there to smooth out that small bump compliance at the top. Um, DVO does a thing called off the top, which is basically a dial adjustment. And that's just changing the amount of volume in the negative air. So it's basically doing the same thing. And it just allows you to fine tune that off the top adjustment um, for 
your fork and it's kind of a neat concept uh, most forks don't allow you to make that adjustment you basically uh, just live with how the fork is designed um, I also heard some brands are trying to get the negative and positive air to cancel each other out at sag um, so that would mean that you're gonna have more negative air than you do positive air at the full extension of your fork and then as you get closer to sag they're going to become equalized and then once you start going beyond sag that's when the positive air chamber has more pressure and the negative air chamber has less pressure and causes less effect on your fork so um there you have it uh just wanted to make sure I clarified this because the people that are that are very technical and understand this stuff, um, they watched my compression video and they're like, you didn't talk about negative air at all. And so I responded. Um, and again, the reason I didn't talk about the negative air is because it's built into most forks and most people don't really need to know about it it's just there to make the fork feel more springy and work better and work better off the top um but now you have it there it is negative air chamber so hopefully all the technical people um can see that yes i do understand there is negative air so um if you are interested in how compression works and you want the more simple version just watch my previous video before this one and i talk about that and it talks about what effect volume spacers have um that is really all you need to know <laughs> um, if you do have a fork that has a negative air chamber or you have a dvo fork that has an off the top adjustment then this video hopefully will help you understand what that adjustment is doing sweet i appreciate your support for my channel please like and subscribe peace